Hello and welcome to the Drivers Hub. I am Kiran. Now, if you haven't seen our RC390 track test video, the link's over here. And if you have already seen that, you must be wondering how exactly this bike is different from the older gen RC390. When it was first launched, it got the race bike, the sports bike for the streets in India. But now, priced at 2.1 lakh rupees then and 3.1 lakh rupees now, we are here to tell you why the inflation and how it makes sense. When you sit on the bike, what's different compared to the older bike? Well, you see a lot is different. First and foremost, the fuel tank. Because the moment you sit on the bike, you feel the tank on your thighs. Second thing, the seat. It is so much more comfortable compared to the plank that you used to get on the older motorcycle, which we'll be showing you in a bit. And then there's the new triple tree over here, up ahead. The clip-ons are below that. So in the older bike, the triple T and the clip-ons were basically the same unit. So you couldn't adjust the clip-ons. They were just in one mode, that is race mode. And well, again, that did take a lot of toll on the rider, especially on the wrists, the shoulder and the lower back. And with the seat not being that comfortable, it is quite a pain to go anything over 150 kilometers over on that bike. But on this bike, the story is a little bit different. You can push yourself at least 200, 250 kilometers of easy highway riding and you'll still be comfortable enough Second update, the aerodynamics. Now again, the looks are quite controversial, but the fairing, the new windshield up ahead, everything works. Even at 160, 170, when you're tucked in properly, it just cuts through wind like hot knife through butter. Now, when it came to the old RC390, and you have also seen a lot of Instagram posts and videos of people putting double bubble visors and etc. on the older motorcycle, unless you're a very tall person, let's say anything above 5'9", 5'10", you'll need something more for this. And I'm damn sure people would have that in the market soon, especially for this bike. But if not, you really don't need to change anything on this. Form and function wise, the aerodynamics, the fairings, they do the job right. They just help you cut through the air like it's no one's business. Next, the pillion seats. They're quite new, they're quite comfortable. I did sit on it yesterday behind Bhavnit sir in the city. And trust me, I was the highest guy in the, on the road. I could see everything, but still I was comfortable. And then again, compared to the older motorcycle, it's very much smoother to ride. There are the standard KTM vibrations. But then, okay, it's a given. The next thing that's new on this motorcycle, again, are the suspension both up front and at the rear. The front has 10mm more of travel, the 15 has 14 to 15mm more of travel, and that shows especially in the performance in the city. Because over here, over the speed breakers, the potholes, this bike handles very well compared to the older motorcycle. Then are the wheels. They are almost 1.5 kgs lighter than the older RC's wheels. You feel that on sprung mass, but still, it's surprising, you know, even after being so light, it's so stable, it works. It's just mind-boggling, you know, how they have reduced the weight where it matters and still break the momentum of the motorcycle. Especially when you're tipping it into a corner, getting back up and tipping it into another corner. The stability is there, it just blows you away. Now to the old RC390, you can see comparatively how aggressively I'm sitting over here. Now this bike is completely stock except for the uh, aftermarket fog lights over there up front and this mobile holder but otherwise everything else is stock. Heck it even has the Sari guard yeah. So you can see over here it's more aggressive again non-adjustable front end over here the handlebars and you can also see how shortcut the front visor is. So then again my point you understand why people opt for a double bubble visor which is quite taller, quite steeper so that it can cut in the wind easily. Comparatively, you'll see there will be a lot more wind buffeting happening when you're sitting upright in a little bit more comfortable position. But then when you tuck in, there's still something hitting on your head. And now you imagine, with a helmet, the height increases. And otherwise, the seats, they're quite like a plank, not comfortable, the pillion seat. So I said it looks like a race bike but still again not comfortable at all compared to this one. The exhaust note is more refined, more mellow, more likeable. Sounds less like an auto rickshaw on that. Auto rickshaw. But okay. When you look at the fairings over here, you see there are less cuts, less lines on this one. And again, you understand 
RC 390 is quite notorious, especially these generations for overheating, especially in traffic. Everything over here, it just throws onto your feet, where over there, it's directed outwards. So, along with the aerodynamics, you see how much it's improved, and then again, you understand why the premium over the price for this when it was launched and that. So, overall, still nice motorcycle, fun to go fast, brutal, raw, but then again, you have to go on the gas every gear to pull out that power where you can play around with the mid-range, be comfortable and still be fast on this motorcycle. Now the biggest difference between this and that is the electronics package. Well, this motorcycle only had ABS. That one has ABS traction control. Both of them are cornering, IMU based and also gets a bi-directional quick shifter which is okay in the city, low RPMs. But when you go full gas, redlining the heck out of the engine and just shifting when it matters it works flawlessly okay so now i've talked about the aero the electronics i'll come in i'll take a deep dive into the electronics later on but again the important factor here is the heat management now the engine looks the same exactly exactly same from outside but then the radiator unit is completely new two fans angled differently the heat dissipation is better yes it switches on again and again but then again that's just to keep the engine in check that's a good thing and the air flows out so that's again a good thing it's not hit directly to your legs but then again like the important thing is the traction control and abs now people would be like why do you need abs and traction control on a 390 cc motorcycle you would expect that on a 600 cc so why do you need it on this well trust me this thing loves to have its wheel spinning the moment it loses traction and it's very easy to lose control. Now that's where the ABS and traction control comes in and above that it's IMU based. So even when you're going hard in the corners, especially on wet patches, you can go fast, you can have fun and you don't have to worry about messing up anywhere or falling down. Not once have I switched off the ABS and traction control to my adventures and corner craving hunts and etc to Lavas and Tamini and that was in serious rain unfortunately our equipment would have been screwed if we had taken it over this so I had to go solo and I did that and I can tell you one thing is that ABS and traction control trust me it doesn't intervene like what people say or expect it to it just intervenes when you need it keeps the bike in check Make sure that, yeah, it gives you a wake-up call. Be careful, don't push your limits. This is the bike's limit, this is your limit, and this is the road's limit. That is what matters, and that's what they have done over here. When it comes to riding, the new tech, the new seat design, and ergonomics of the newer RC390 definitely make it more approachable as a motorcycle to even a rookie rider. But that doesn't mean that the RC390 has now gone soft. It still pumps 43 bhp out of its 393cc single cylinder motor which is now heavily reworked for better mid-range and better cooling. It has 3 radiator fans, mind you. So twist the throttle to its maximum and the RC390 can still surprise you with its sheer power. No other bike in the segment has this much performance but it doesn't feel as raw and as unhinged as the older motorcycle. The older RC390 may have similar power levels but all of the power is high up in the rev range making it frankly quite dangerous to open up on public roads. Yes, it may not be as easy to ride as the newer bike but the sensation of being on the limit is a very exciting one. The newer bike cocoons you with a safety net with its electronics and the older one will slap you across the face if you make a mistake. The brakes are also a big change with the new bike. Not only that the brakes are now lighter, they also come with a combo of IMU based ABS system that makes sure that you can stop efficiently and effectively. Moreover, the exhaust note of the new RC390 is very sweet. Like I said, the older motorcycle sounds like an auto rickshaw, whereas the new one has a higher pitch at the top end and gives you more of that motorsport derived feel with this new exhaust. The newer bike is still a precision tool, even with the BS6 Toms, the more bulky body and less compact dimensions. Well, KTM had to compromise somewhere. And instead of being two steps backward and one step forward, the new RC390 more feels like one step back and two step forward 
in terms of innovation so we have all the tech all the aerodynamics better braking capacity and ability but the bike is more bulkier but hey no complaints so ultimately at the end of the day if you are a pro rider who already has um you know like multiple bikes in your garage and you're looking for a track tool this bike is the pick for you but if you are something someone like me just no more track days only your canyon runs city and highway and especially you're learning to ride fast this motorcycle is the perfect choice for you because it has all the safety net it has power when you need it the gearbox is nice and slick you even get quick shifter you know you can flex on that on your friend so just like the bmw m3 m4 well the looks are questionable we all cried when the photos came out same thing with this but then again you will be riding the motorcycle you will be on the motorcycle not looking at the headlight and then you will realize how fun it is to ride that's what matters So at the end of the day i think if you're learning to ride fast you want something nice for the city you're not doing much of track days go ahead for this motorcycle that's about it from me let me know in the comments down below this is your pick or this is your pick we would love to hear it from you as for me i say i like this one re i say i would omit the headlights i really enjoyed this one chal ciao i'll see you in the next one